Hi YouTube, my name is Martin and I'm here to advocate for vegetables. Cause let's face it, rarely do we celebrate the vegetable as the superhero of a given meal. Those honors are usually reserved for some sort of protein, be it meat or fish. While the veg, well the veg can take more of a sidekick row, couldn't it? But I want to show you that veggies can rise to the occasion when called upon as well. If you don't believe me, just take a look for yourself. With a few simple steps, we're going to elevate the humble cauliflower to the level of any other star ingredient. This dish is not only super delicious and easy to make, but it's super nutritious as well. It can easily take a centerpiece row. Oh, and did I mention, it's also great for sharing. But enough talking, let's cook! When picking your cauliflower for this recipe, I would suggest you look for a small head of about 1 kilo or 35 ounces. Smaller cauliflowers are more packed of flavor, but also slightly sturdier and hold up better during cooking. Using a sharp knife, we want to carefully landscape any leaves off. While these are perfectly edible and you could keep them on, I find they tend to burn during cooking. Next, go ahead and cut down the stalk so that the cauliflower can sit evenly and we're more or less done with our prep. Attaboy. In order for our star to really shine through, we want to achieve a contrasting buttery interior and a gnarly looking yet beautifully charred outer layer. Step 1 of the process is dedicated to the inside. More specifically, we're big pot boiling. For these purposes, we bring into a boil a large pot of water, left with enough room to fit in our cauliflower and season it with so generously. And to put that into exact terms, use 15 grams or about 1 tablespoon of salt for roughly every litre of water you've got. The high salinity will help season our cauliflower on the inside while it's cooking. We're boiling for about 10 minutes, after which we're taking it out of the pot and letting it air dry for 5 to 10 minutes so that the surface dries up and we can get a nice char during our next stage of cooking. When our cauliflower has dried off of any excess water on the surface, we're going to go ahead and give it a good olive oil massage. You want an even coating of oil over the surface of the vegetable. This will help it caramelize nicely, but don't go overboard with the oil. Season with a good pinch of flaky sea salt and we're good to go. We're baking in a preheated oven set to 200 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit for about half an hour. This gives us plenty of time to prepare a quick salsa verde. In a pesto and mortar, we are adding one clove of garlic along with a good pinch of salt. The salt will both help grind down the garlic and season the sauce. We are bashing into fine paste and adding 30 grams or about two handfuls of fresh parsley leaves with any larger stalks removed. And we're grinding into a thick paste before adding a tablespoon of capers, two or three tablespoons of olive oil, and two or three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Let everyone get to know each other and we're seasoning with a good pinch of chili flakes and half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Give everything one last mix and you should have the consistency of a thick pesto. Now would be a great point to adjust for viscosity, seasoning or acidity and then set aside. In the meantime, our cauliflower should have caramelized nicely so we can go ahead and take it out of the oven. What we're looking for is a lovely char on some of the florets and a golden hue over the top. Let that rest for a minute as we move on to arranging our plate. We're going to build our cauliflower feast on a cooling yogurt base. We're dolloping two or three heaping tablespoons of yogurt on our plate and we're swirling it with the back of our spoon to create a circular shape, creating ridges with the top of the spoon that we hold our herby sauce that we just prepared and then filling those canals with our salsa verde to create a lovely visual, textural and flavorful contrast. For the centerpiece, we're placing our cauliflower in the center of the yogurt foundation and we're finishing with a good drizzle of olive oil, a sprinkling of toasted flaked almonds, some fresh chopped parsley and and of course, a touch of flaky sea salt. But enough chit chat, let us give it a taste. My first thoughts are instantly devoted to the pleasant contrast in both texture and flavor between the more complex charred outer layer and slightly more subtle creamy inside. This is some ming yang material right here. But it's hard not to mention the herby salsa verde that adds a gorgeous acidic contrast and another layer of fat and seasoning to the cauliflower. The thick creamy yogurt binds everything together and provides a cooling contrast to the punchy salsa which leaves you begging for more. But I'm afraid as much as I'm in love with this dish, it is more of a feast for a single person. So I'll do the reasonable thing and share. Of course, you can have it all to yourself. Just make your own.